Okay, I've just about gotten to where I can get the radiator support cut out. I had to take this air duct that goes through here over to the resonator. Put the one bolt out here under the battery tray. Got that out of the way. It was covering up where the radiator support welds in to the uh, subframe mount under here on the frame rail. I didn't have to take the entire box out, just this, uh, just this half on this side. There's about, I think there's six spot welds inside there. I can show you that. If you can see that or not, there's six spot welds on the frame there that I had to, had to get to that was in the way. And that's really it as far as the parts that need to come off. I've got to go through, I've, I've actually drilled a couple over here on the side, uh, spot welds, all the way over here on the, the apron, just to see if the drill bit was still sharp enough to do it. I may go to the uh, the clamp style on the rest of them if I can get it on there. Those two I wasn't going to be able to get it on. I'm over here working on the fender now. I don't think I showed you what it looked like before. But I've got, I think I've just about got it now. It was kicked out right here, probably an inch. And it was real tight here at the top. I still need to pull it in just a hair, but that'll, that'll think I'll take care of it. But for the most part, it's, it's straight now. This mount up here was bent way back. I knocked that back down and then pushed it back towards the center of the car. I had it kicked out. I'm going to have to knock this ridge down. I pulled the, the lip around here. I pulled it back out straight, the lip on the fender on the inside. But I still got to knock this ridge down, get rid of that. But I'll wait till I get the hood on so I can match it to the hood. Here's a new hood I got. Well, new to me. It's used. It's off of 2014. There's a tiny ding right here. If you can see that, there's a ding. There's a little high spot right in there somewhere. Let's see if you can see that. There's a little high spot right there. And the, most of the damage is just a ridge. There's a ridge right there. And a ridge right there. I think this happened when the hood got pulled underneath because the car, the car I got it off of was hit on the driver's side. Get the phone out of the tripod. And I can show you better. The uh, the striker has actually been ripped out of it. I didn't realize that until I bought it and got it on the trailer and went back inside and told them about it. And so they gave me another fifty dollars off of it. But other than that, it's okay. I'm just going to knock this back in flat. It's got it pulled up a little bit. You can see that. But apparently, this is a real weak connection here because the same thing happened to the. Uh, to this car that I've got and let's show, show you the latch it just pulls straight out of the latch and I'm glad I saved it I'm just gonna if I have to enlarge the holes in the hood after I flatten it down with a step drill and I'll set this in there and clamp it in place or tape it in place somehow to hold it and I'll just weld it to the hood I know a weld will be stronger than that. If it pulled out that easily, a, a full weld around each each pin there will be plenty plenty sufficient. But the hood itself is uh, it's pretty straight. I got the hinges with it, but one's bent. And I already bought some new aftermarket ones anyway, and those tend to work okay. So I'm just going to use the ones I've got. Um, not use these. But anyway, the fender I think is okay now. I've got this pulled in. I need to pull this right here in just a little bit. It's a little bit higher than the door, but all the way down, gap looks pretty good, and it's nice and flush everywhere except from about right in here up. And that's where the mount is, right behind here. So I think that's got that taken care of. I left it on the car so I could do that, and I don't have to don't have to take the fender off to get the radiator support. We've got this weld right here. It's part of the support itself. And these two are the only ones that hold it to this apron. So there's one, two, three, and there's one right here, one or two right here that are really, really close to the rail uh, that I can get to, but I won't have to pull the fender 
off the car to do that. So that'll be a little bit of time savings there. Most of the time you got to pull the fender off to do all this, but I think I can leave it on. Next thing is going to be to pull all the trim out of the trunk uh, so I can get a little better look at what I got to do back there. So I'll show you the trunk when you get get all the trim out of it and really see how bad the spare tire the spare tire pan and the uh, rear panel are. All right, I've got the trunk trim out. Really get a good view of what's going on in here. Let me grab a light. You can see all the buckles. It's buckled all the way back to uh, right there. There's a seam. There's a seam that runs along the frame rail where it's spot welded. It's actually running right down here. The spare tray up the other side, same way. And the back flange of it just creates the rear flange for the rear panel to to weld to. So once I get the rear panel out, which is going to be this entire piece right here, goes all the way to the outside. And up to here, to the, uh, I think they call it the tail light gutter or something like that. I just got some strange names, but that's where it stops. It's that the whole piece all the way down up here to this weld. And it runs around the outside at this seam and down to this pinch weld right here along the quarter panel. And then underneath, along the uh, floor over here and the spare well along the other side and up and back around and this this is actually lapped on the inside I'm not sure why they made it that way it makes it really hard to get this out but you have to rip all the seam sealer off here and I'll probably just drill the uh, drill all the way through this from the outside because when I get the new piece it's going to go in behind this up behind it like that and then I'll be able to weld plug weld on the outside to the new piece that's underneath behind it I did find uh, up here that this is at this weld here this has got a little bit of a buckle in it right there around that weld and over here also a little worse on this side and the paint's flaking off right there on that ridge so I know that's something that happened in the accident it's not just made that way and a little bit of a buckle in here on that piece but I think once I push this out I can flatten all that there's a little bit of one there too that may actually have been like that but I don't think so and I don't have another car to compare it to but it's not really that big a deal if I can get I think I'm gonna run a port of power from right here uh, probably over to the back brace back there or maybe somewhere down in the floor maybe right in there in that pocket and run it up this way and go and push this out get some pressure on this so that I can tap that back down and get this piece out a little bit but I won't I probably won't worry about that till I get all of this pushed out, get the trunk lid stretched and everything I need to do. Tap that in, then I'll measure the trunk opening, make sure I got everything right. And that way I can leave it where I, wherever I need to put it. Just to get the trunk to seal and everything to line up. That's the main thing, is make it, making it seal again. But we're going to have to come in here, cut all this out, cut the outer panel. Uh, the rear body panel out first then come in here and cut all the spot welds along that that seam there all the way around pull that piece out put it put it in first and then build it from the inside out that's the game plan on that this uh rear rebar is borderline okay i mean it's got a few places here where it's it's been stressed the paint's chipped off but the main thing is that it's just, it's barely rolled under. I don't know if you can tell that. It's right under the center. It's just a little bit twisted. But it really hasn't been buckled anywhere or compromised all that bad. I think if I can twist it back up like this, 
may be able to reuse it. It's got to come off to do the repair. So I may just try that before I do the repair to it. And if it won't work, then when I go back to put it back together, I'll just get a used one to put back in it. Um, that's really where I'm going to stop right now until I can get some, get some parts in. I've got the front end ready to cut out. But it's pretty late right now. I can't make any noise in the garage that that that's going to be that's going to take to do that. So I'll have to get the grinder out and some other things. So I'm just going to have to wait on that. But as soon as I get the radiator support in the front, then everything will be ready to put back in. I'll have to paint it before I can put the radiator in just so I can run it. I haven't seen it run yet. Battery's not. I don't think the battery's any good. I have to jump it off the other car over there just to get it to run, but. Once I get it running, I can put all the front end back together and, and uh, then just go focus on the rear. All right, I'm not sure exactly where I left off in the last video, but I'm going to take the reciprocating saw and I'm going to cut and cut this piece off there and right along in here so that I can get the drill to these spot welds and that'll get all this out of the way. I'll do the same thing on the other side. That'll get the top half of this completely out of the way. And then I'll change the alternator when it comes in while this is out of my way. It'll be a lot easier. I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece. And I'll show you that. And then I'll go and cut the other ones off camera. It'll be the same thing just through here and the other side also. Uh, be back when I get all this cut. Okay, I got that section from the back side. Just went through here, came up. It helps to try to cut, cut through any holes that you've already made or that are already there because it's just less you have to cut and it's a little bit faster. So on this side, or this part here, I'm going to go through these holes just because that'll give me a little bit less to cut.
back and side. It'll be off. Alright, this bottom section on this side was already ripped off from the frame, so I didn't have to cut that at all. Uh, this over here, I already drilled a couple of spot wells. That one was pulled off already. Uh, same thing with this. I'm not sure if that was a spot well. I don't think it was. Uh, actually, it may have been. I think it ripped that one out. And I went ahead and drilled these two. So this is pretty loose. I'm just going to get my, my uh, seam buster and just knock this through. Knock the seam buster through that and just knock it off. Alright, here's the seam buster if you've never seen one. Uh, part number 20015. I got this from Steck, I believe. It's sharpened on one end like a chisel and sharpened on the side. That's the way it comes. I haven't done anything to it. I'm just going to run this. I'm going to try to protect all the original apron here. So I'm going to insert it on this side and go that way. With that spot weld and then insert it on the corner, come back this way so I don't scratch this. It's already scratched on the side, but I'm going to try not to gouge it up here because that's visible even with the fender on. That one I'm going to have to drill a little bit on. It's still hanging on to the spot well. That one I didn't drill at all to begin with. Go from underneath on this one. I'll try to bend the flange over just a hair. Work this in. I'm going to get inside, inside right here and go from this direction. Be right back. All right, we went ahead and drilled this top hole a little bit more. Well, a little bit, and a little bit more on this one. And I think it's going to pop off now. You don't want to drill all the way through because you need to leave uh, the base layer on the apron. So you have something to weld to. If you drill it all the way through, you won't have anything to drill the new one to unless you go to a new spot. And then you've weakened it because you've got holes in the panel. part's loose there's actually two layers to this it's still attached to the apron I'm gonna have to get in there and just chisel that off I'll grab the chisel it should get should get off of there try to support it so it didn't fall show you this it's still hanging on I'm gonna to have to probably grind it or get the spot weld drill on that one that one right there the second one on the, the right this one right here second one that one right there is okay that's gonna to have to stay this piece right in here is part of the apron right there so I need to get that piece right there off and it'll be free be right back when I get that off All right, it's off. I'm gonna have to hammer and dolly these flanges here to get the new one to fit on just right. Both of these were double layered, so when I drilled through, it only got through one of them. That's why I had to fight it 
coming off. Didn't just pop off. Because this piece is not on the new one. It runs in here. This actually comes from behind here all the way over. So I had to, had to preserve that. I'm going to straighten all that up. And I'm going to focus on the bottom next to get it off. I'm going to try to save the lower tie bar there if I possibly can. Let me show you the bottom, bottom piece here. If I can save this, I can maybe sell it or save it for another car. But I can actually drill it. These two spot weld, I can drill all the way through. Because if anybody reused this piece, they would need to plug, plug weld from this side. So I can just drill all the way through, pop those two loose, drill. I'm going to drill this. This part stays on the car. This is part of the subframe mount. But I can drill from the bottom all the way through this hole. And then leave the bottom piece solid when I replace it so I can plug weld from the top and not have to get underneath. And it's, I think there's two or three more like that on the side and then one in the very back that I'll have to get to. But I think if I can drill all those through with a drill, this piece should come off uh, right there also on the front. There's two. If I can drill, well actually three or four, yeah. If I can drill that off, then I can save that bottom piece. I'd hate to just ruin it. Same thing over here. The hardest part about doing one of these is getting in here to these because you don't want to drill through these. This is going into the frame. You want to just drill holes in the new one so you can plug well from this side. So this side I need to just drill it through the front. You either hit it with a grinder or probably a drill bit. I can't get my C-clamp style spot weld drill in here. Same thing through here. Just drill those off just through the, the top layer. And this is actually on the new piece. There's the new one over there. It's upside down, but it's everything across the top. And then it comes down here and it's a solid piece. One big assembly that goes around. But I'm going to try to save the lower tie bar there off the, the original just because there's nothing wrong with it. Next thing I'm going to do is, uh, is actually just get this piece off. I just cut it with the saw, but I still got to cut the spot welds out of it and get it off and straighten that side up. And I'll focus on getting this, this bottom piece off. Um, I may try to, if it, if it looks like it'd be easier, I may try to cut the, the side pieces off the frame, let this come off as one assembly, and then take this off the bottom. If, if it'll work that way, I don't know yet. Uh, but I'll be back when I, get the, when I get these off, off the sides, and get that side straightened. I'll come back and show you how to get this off. All right, I'm going to take the spot weld drill and... Try to get the top ones off. I'm gonna to have to take the fender off, I think, to get the drill in. Get the drill in right here. There's just not enough room to get the drill in and actually drill it straight. So I'm gonna hit these at the top, get that loose, and then probably pull the fender off. That'll that'll keep it protected anyway. They don't want to take it off, but it'll be better to have it off. pre-drilled these with an eighth inch drill bit just to put a divot in it so this bit won't walk around. I'm going to start it real slow in the hole. Just hold it on there and it'll, it'll slowly pull the C-clamp back as this goes, as this drill bit protrudes. Alright, I've got my air off for some reason. Let me turn it back on. All right, now I can do something. This is just a single layer. Well, uh, on this, I think the next one might have two layers on it. They may have missed it. Just barely with the spot weld, we'll see. There are two layers back there, but I'm not sure if, if that weld got both of them or not. Alright, 
Just got those loose, or at least where I can break it loose. I'm going to go ahead and get the fender off. Be back in a second. All right, starting on the fender. I went ahead and took out the bolt that's in here with the door all the way open. You should be able to see that. Uh, there's a hole right there. I took that out just with a long extension just to get the handle away from the door. And I'm real, real uh, careful with that because I don't want to chip the door edge. can tape it up if you need to, but I'm just really, really careful with it. The rest of them I'm going to take out with a drill. There's one, one up here, one about, well, actually towards the front, one down here, and one at the very bottom. Then there's a plastic filler in here that's hooked in that will have to just be worked off as I try to wiggle it off the car. And there's a few clips in here. Uh, I may have to end up taking the, the fender liner out with it because usually those, those clips down here are snapped in you can't get them back out. The way that they're snapped without breaking them. So if it's if there's some reusable clips on the inside of the fender liner, I'll just take the whole thing off as an assembly together. Be right back when it's off. Okay, I've lifted the car a little bit to give me some more working room. You can see that clip right there has got the it's the type of you, that you can get under the side of. Pop it out. I've also got these pliers here that squeeze both sides at once, and it wedges underneath it. As you squeeze both sides, it pulls the center of it out with those wedges, and they'll pop out that way. But sometimes you can't get get that in there. There's not enough room, so I may be able to get it on this one if this one won't come out. Uh, there's one under here, and probably a couple in the front. But this will come off with the fender, and I won't have to break these right here, and I can just put it all back together. As one assembly also when I get the radiator support back in it because I'll need to have this on when I get that welded in to test the hood fitment and all that so I'll just pull it all off together all right I've got it all off there it is over there I may end up taking that piece off anyway we'll see though um, this is the part where it it hooks into the back of the fender right there to hold this piece to it in two places, so I just worked those little hooks out. There were some broken clips on the inside anyway, from I guess from the accident up here where it pulled the fender back a little bit. Had a couple broken clips in here. But uh had a bunch of leaves fall out, so that was not really a bad idea to take that off anyway to get the leaves out of the fender. Now that that's off and out of the way, I can drill these two right here. I'll have to do it with a drill bit. I can't get my C-clamp in there. I don't think I can. I might be able to get to this one, but I'll try both for sure just to see. But uh, I'm going to work on getting this piece right here off, and then I'll straighten the other side a little bit, uh, get it close enough to where I can at least test fit everything later, and then adjust it from there. But uh, this will be next. I'm going to go get the drill, see what I can do with that. All right, it looks like the uh, drill's going to fit, so I'm going to try these two. there so I may have to just run my drill bit out a little bit more and adjust it where it should protrude some more Get a little bit deeper same thing here step in the end, end of the flange just like this. So I'm trying to get this tip to where it will lay flat against it. Hopefully that's deep enough. I'll try to chisel it off of there. Be right back. Alright, I'm going to start chiseling, see if it'll pop off. If not, I'll have to go a little further. Those came, those came right off. Perfect. Now 
to the bottom. And this is a little awkward because there's nowhere to get under it. It's easy to get to. I try to split it here. Try to go from underneath. I'll be back. I'm about to run out of memory here. I'll be back when I get it off. 